Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to be talking about something I've wanted for like ever. Access to mask vertices and expressions. So let's check it out. Alright guys, this video is sponsored by Videoblocks. Videoblocks has one of the fastest growing, largest stock video libraries, with over 3 million videos, After Effects templates, and motion backgrounds. This includes the only contributor marketplace that gives 100% of the commission back to the artists. That's pretty awesome. I actually haven't seen that anywhere. So that's really cool. And all of these clips come with a royalty-free agreement, so you can't get hit with copyright claims. They're giving away seven days of video blocks, so you can try it out and get access to this massive video library and that royalty-free license for free. And finding footage for this project found a lot of cool clips, various angles, and a lot of coverage so that you can actually cut things together. Go to videoblocks.com slash YouTube or click the link in the description box below to start downloading and get seven days of video blocks for free. And thanks again, video blocks for sponsoring this. All right, guys. So we have footage of this sexy lady's face. We've got an extreme close up. We've got an MCU and we've got masks going crazy over her face because now we can actually tie expressions to those points. And at the end, we'll have a quick color correction tutorial because somebody requested it. But if you don't want to see that, this video is not as long as you think it is. So what I did in these things, I tracked this lady's face. I threw some masks on this footage layer and I kind of used that new face tracker so that I can get some points on here. The face tracker is kind of cool because it'll also track even if you really don't have a full face. And I got some points that I could connect to. So matter of fact, if we open this up, you can see the points are still there from the mask that we tracked. So this is what I drew over it. And After Effects' uh, face tracker kind of made it work. And it locked pretty good as you can tell. It's come a long way. So now because we have these points, I can bring these into an expression. So let's click on this warm layer right here and open that up. I'm going to put a generalized expression in the description, but they're all kind of purpose built depending on what you want to do. The basic premise though is to make an array of points and then do create path using that array. So here I wanted to make triangles and then have those triangles cycle across the whole mask. So they're going to have a variable offset and we're going to floor the value of that using math.floor because this is going to point to our vertices and we can only have integer vertices. And that's just pointed to an offset slider. And this thing is parented to our footage. So then we have num points equal to this dot parent dot mask, mask one dot mask path dot points. And then there's an actual uh, parentheses here. If you take that away, it's not going to work. So make sure that's there dot length. And what that's going to do is going to get the amount of vertices that we have. In this case, I think it's six. Then we're going to set P equal to new. And then there's a space here. Array, that's a capital A, and that also has parentheses. And then we're setting P0 equal to two comp, open parentheses. This dot parent dot mask, mask one, dot mask path dot points. So basically the same thing that we had before. And after the parentheses there, we have an open bracket. And inside that, we have in parentheses offset plus one. And outside of the parentheses, we have modulo, the percent sign, num points, and then close the bracket, close parentheses, then a semicolon, and that is it for that line. And then here, P1 and P2 are the same thing, except for instead of offset plus one, it's offset plus two, offset plus three. Then after that, we're doing create path. So basically we're sampling point one, two, and three, plus whatever offset we have, so that our triangle moves around the mask. It's pretty simple, and then you get this movement around there. So this one's done a little bit differently. I drew an oval mask over this footage layer, which has now been modified after the track. Basically, when you have a mask here, you just right click on it and do track mask. Then if we open up our tracker real quick, you can see we'll have an option kind of like this face tracking detailed features is what I used. So that'll give you an effect on here that has a whole bunch of different points. And I was hoping to programmatically like go through each one of these, maybe as an array or something like that. But it turns out that there's actually a bunch of other things that are hidden in between these. So in here, I actually set about the lengthy task of typing them all up. So if we bring this up here and drag this down, sorry, we had to get rid of the lady for a moment. Here we have a layer control that we're bringing in under L and that just makes it easier to pick which layer we're referencing and makes this code a little bit more portable. So then we have R set to effect checkbox control checkbox. Generally I would name that. I must've forgotten, but that was going to be for randomization. Then we have offset equals math.floor effect offset slider, just like before. And instead of getting our points from the mask that we had, we don't have a mask that we tracked other than the outline of her face that it gave us. So we're just going to grab those points straight from the effect. And they're already normalized to comp, so we don't have to do that. Instead of using points 
and then bracket zero to tell it to put it at key zero in the array. We're just using points dot push, and then we're getting our layer control layer dot so l dot effect face track points left eyebrow inner dot value closing that off and did that for every one. So then again we have num points equals points dot length here at the bottom, which again is going to allow us to modulus so that when we get to the end as we're sliding through these things it'll loop back to the beginning. So basically if we had 20 points here or whatever, 21 would get modulus by 20, the total number of points, which leaves one, so that brings us back to the beginning. So then here we're setting P equal to new array, and that's gonna be the actual points that we're gonna use on our path. And then we have a check here for if random, is greater than zero. Then we're gonna set seed random equal to offset, comma true, so that's timeless. And then we're doing P dot push to comp points from above here, math dot floor, open parentheses, random, zero, comma, number points. So these are all the same line. Our seed random is just seed random offset, offset plus one, offset plus two. So that way we get three different points. Then we have an else, so if we're not doing anything random, we're basically gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna grab points from this array, offset, modulus, number points. Offset plus one, modulus, number points, offset plus two, modulus point, number points. And then create path P just like before. So when we go back, right now we have random off, let me rename that to random. So right now these are just following the points in order as they are in the effect. If we turn that on, they'll go in a random order. I didn't set up another random seed, but you can also have a random seed that you're adding to that offset. So you can get different looks in between here. This one was random enough for me, so I didn't really bother to do that. But you can if it doesn't look right to you. You can also have another one set slightly differently with a different offset. So you can have two different colors at the same time. These are just adjustment layers. So you can have whatever you want underneath them. It does remind me, I can't remember if it was on this one or not, or if when I did the mask to the actual footage, because I did that during some of my testing, that when you have your mask set to add now, maybe it's just with the adjustment layers, I don't know what. But something to note, I saw there was a vertical pixel shift for some reason when this was set to add. I don't know why, it makes absolutely no sense, but what I ended up doing was do subtract and then invert the mask. So if you run into that issue doing anything, that's a good fix for it, at least for now. All right, so let's take a look at something else you could do with that. This one works with tracked points that I had. So I tracked a couple of these things. I tracked the edges of this. And you can have things mark with it and different masks work with it too. Just something I thought was kind of interesting and something neat you could do with some drone footage if you wanted to. Obviously, you're not limited to just this one mask. And in order for this to line up properly with shapes, you have to start them at 0, 0 instead of like 965, 40 or whatever. The position has to be in the top left corner. After that, they'll all line up. I like the way the others are set up. This actually uses different layer controls and grabs the points based on that. I did this this way to kind of test something, which I'm probably gonna put on the blog later on. It's just a way to make this to where if you wanna duplicate these, you can add more points without having to go through a lot of code. I just have to figure out the proper expressions to actually loop through and grab all these different effects. But once I've done that, adding new points will just be as easy as duplicating these layer controls and selecting a new layer. So it'll work effectively with nulls for the most part. All right, so that's it for how the mass vertices work in After Effects. Basically just build yourself an array of points and then pass that to create path. I've recently been asked to show kind of color grading and while I'm not an expert on it, I'll go through a little bit of what I did for this lady. So this is how the footage looked when I grabbed it. There's no color correction on this other than on the layer where we have the orange. So initially I started off with a LUT and I looked like this, which I thought was pretty nice and I tried to get kind of close to it. So we're here. It's a little different in how this rolls off. I'm not a huge fan. But without actually using a LUT, this is not bad. So you can see how her skin rolls off into here versus the LUT version. I did have to bring this back a little bit though, so you can kind of see an edge on that. But like I said, just a quick grade. This just brings back our shadows to more of a neutral. As you can see, she's very blue here. All right, so let's add a new Lumetri to this. Should probably bring in the scopes and stuff for this, but I'm just going crazy with it, so let's have fun. All right, so let's first open a basic. I'm gonna bring the exposure down just a little bit. That's pretty good. Bring this contrast down a good bit. Bring the highlights down, because we're a little hot on her nose and on her shoulder and stuff. We could even more. Since I'm gonna push the color a lot, I'm actually gonna kind of flatten the image out a little bit. I'm gonna bring the shadows up a little bit. And I'm gonna mess with the whites a little bit. Bring them back up just a little bit. We're in eight bits, so if we go too far, we're gonna kind of get this bright color in between. So I'm gonna try to avoid that. All right, so we're gonna open up our creative. I'm going to split tone a little bit, bring the shadows and stuff down, and the highlights up a little bit. 
if you feel like your highlights start to get out of like white, like let's say you're too green or something, if you bring that 180 degrees from the color that it's casting into, it'll neutralize it. It's probably not best to do that in split toning, but I'm just telling you about it. So let's open up curves. Let's give ourselves a little bit of a contrast curve. Bring that up a little bit. Gotta bring out the tones of her skin a little bit. Let's bring up red here. I don't want it in the background. Let's bring it down. She doesn't need too much in the highlights either. Green, I'm gonna take that out of the image a little bit. Everywhere we take that out that red has been added, it's gonna be a little bit orange. I want to go to that yellow. We're kind of doing the teal orange look, not because it's popular, but because people's skin tone is orange and the opposite of that is teal and that helps our colors pop. All right, so let's go down here. We're going to go to our color wheels next. I'm going to push these mids to orange. All right, I'm going to bring these shadows down toward the blue. That's probably enough right there, actually. Maybe we bring our split toning more blue. Then we balance this toward the shadows so that we're not affecting as much. There we go. That way we keep kind of a nice tone on her but our background can go way bluer. Don't want to lose too much of her. We'll bring back that orange a little bit. Highlights, it's not bad right there. Let's see. So now here's where I was saying, if I don't mind this going a little bit more toward the orange color for the light on her, but if you want to neutralize those highlights, bring it back toward the blue. I'm going to push them up just a little bit, just so it has a little bit of warmth. I might go up here and add just a little bit. I don't think I had any color temperature changes in the original one. I had a little tint like that, which actually I kind of like that. All right, so we're getting close on that. All right, so we're kind of getting like a weird color to our shadow here. So let's try to select that with a secondary. Show the mask. I don't know why, but sometimes it doesn't seem like it's going to select the right color. It's like it selects colors after the correction already and then has a hard time going back with it. I don't know. Let's just expand this until we get there. So as we can see, we're not getting anything in there from that area. Even if we expand almost the whole damn image. So it must be a saturation here. Yeah, we're starting to get into that area. Let's dial it back with the lightness. Didn't intend to actually drag the whole thing over, but that's okay. Expand that out. Let's bring the hue back into more of the skin tone range. Let's see the saturation up in here. Let's expand it a little bit. And I think we're still in wanting more of the darker area. So let's bring this back. Not sure why we're getting splotchy in here. Let's drag this out. That actually might work. So let's turn this off. Let's go down to correction over here. And I'm just going to hit temperature up a little bit. You can see it's subtle, but it brings that back in nice. Even if we push it a good bit, you can see kind of we're not as like green down here. Might even be able to go a little bit more. That's a little too far. That's not bad. Might be able to add colors back in here. Might be able to get a little bit more of that in there. Let's do a hue up in here. I think it's more along the lines of the saturation. Aha, flipped into the other values. Perfect, just gonna drag this down a little bit more. I think maybe we expand this out a little bit. Let's go that way too, why not? We're dealing with a good portion of her, but that's okay. Hopefully we just don't get speckles like that in there. All right, let's turn that off. Smooths in pretty good. I'm going to go back into the shadows even more. You can see we're kind of getting it still in there that way. Undo that. I'm going to go back to the split tone. Really going to hammer that split tone home. Actually, not really. All right, I'm going to go back in here. This is something I did in the other one, I think, too. I brought the blacks up just a smidge. But actually, I think I'm going to leave that off. Does have kind of a nice quality to it. Yeah, we'll leave it this way. All right, so what I did after that is I added another Lumetri. And on this one, I basically just qualified the blacks here with this HSL secondary. Clicked on show mask, basically expanded it to where it was this hair. Open it here. I brought this down so that it's like just really the darkest sections. I smoothed it out like this. And it's even smaller. What I'm trying to do is get some gray to black in here. Let's bring this down a little bit more. Bring that that way. There we go. So now we're getting kind of this gray thing in here. I'm going to drag these all out just to make sure that's as smooth as we can get it. Yeah. I'm going to correction. 
I'll open up this one color wheel. I'm going to go up here and turn this off because I want to actually see it. All right, so we know we're kind of a blue green in here. So if we bring this up into this area, maybe a lot because I can't see it. There we go. So let's bring this back down. We're a little purple right now, but we're in the purple, so that kind of makes sense. Might be a little bit more this way, actually. Might be more of the counter to it. Yeah. So this kind of allows you to tone the black to the color that you want. So now we have a black tone, but it's not like a super black. It's just warm. And it matches up kind of nicely with the rest of this. All right, so let's see how we compare to what I did the other day. Let's take a snapshot real quick. Oh, yeah, I love that weird camera sound. Let's click this. We can kind of see and compare... There's more blue in the shadows and a little bit more orange. Uh, I think we actually could push that a little bit more. I like that. Midtones. Let's push them a little bit more to the orange red. A little more yellow. Let's undo that real quick. I'm actually going to do it in the highlights. That's kind of where that goes in there. One thing I wish Lumetri had that like Resolve has is a way to actually set where your midtones and your highlights and stuff are. You would think that this slider would do that, but it's really just gain for the midtones, highlights, and shadows. And it's okay. We can bring these shadows up a little bit, maybe. A little less, because we still want them to be affected by the next Lumetri. We bring this back down just a little bit. Now we're a little too orange for her. Again, go a little more red up in the mids. That's not a bad look. Just got a little bit more darkness and stuff in this one. Oops. Go back in here and bring the blacks back down. Then you probably don't need the last qualifier that I have on there. That's nice too. So let's get back down to this here and bring the highlights back up a little bit. There you go. I'm going to leave it there. Looks nice. I actually kind of prefer it to the previous grade now a little bit. There's a little bit more white on her nose there. I could do that by bringing this back down. Go back into here. Bring these mids up just a little bit more. Just a little bit up in here. And maybe take out more green there. Uh, I should get too pink. Take out some blue. I don't think I did this in the original one, but let's just take a little bit of blue out of the midtones. Not that much. Add more back into the highlights. All right. Now I'm going to leave it alone. That's a good luck. Could bring some more blue back in here if you really want to. Just a little yellow twinge to the whole thing. I'm going to bring this back down. There we go. All right. I like that look. I'm going to leave it there. That's what you get. I'm going to turn this stuff back on. Render this thing. It takes a little bit because of Lumetri, so you're probably watching a sped up version of it right now, but that's okay. Foxy. <laughs> oh, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. All right, guys, you render it, you get that. There you go. Hopefully that satisfies your grading desires. Probably not. But it looks all right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm, okay. Okay. All right, guys. That's it for this one. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. And make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and I will see you guys next week. Foxy. Bye. <laughs>